In this video, we will talk about sampling distributions. A sampling distribution is defined as the probability distribution of a statistic from multiple samples drawn from a population. This sounds a bit abstract, and there is no reason to try and memorize it, but it's very important to try and understand it. Sampling distributions are a crucial concept for appreciating the importance of statistics. It's essentially what inferential statistics are all about. So I'm going to try and illustrate what sampling distributions are through some graphical examples. Let us imagine a population. So these are all different individuals. And we want to know something about them, but we can't study them all. So we sample. Here is a subset of the population highlighted in green. Some individuals are selected to be studied. And then we want the results to be generalizable back to the whole population but we could have chosen a different sample. Here is a different subset of individuals. We could have chosen a larger sample. Here's more of them highlighted. Or we could have chosen a different sample of the larger size. Here's another subset. What are the implications of these choices? Let's make the example just a little bit more concrete. Our population contains exactly 1,000 individuals. The values that we're interested in measuring are normally distributed in the population with a population mean equal to 4.5 and a standard deviation equal to 1.5. I have rounded these numbers in order to be able to display them in the circles, but the actual values aren't integers. And I'm going to be drawing samples from this population. First, small samples with size 8, and then a bit larger samples with size 30. We will calculate the mean and standard deviation for each sample. So these will be our sample statistics. And of course, our goal is to estimate the population parameters, that mu and sigma. If this were a real study, we would only have one sample. That would be our study sample. But in every real study, other samples would have been possible. We could have picked other individuals. Now, the important question here is, what difference does it make? How different could my results be if I had chosen a different sample, a different subset of the population? This is what sampling distributions help us understand. So let us go back to our population, and you can see the rounded values of our variable on each individual. So our first sample, of eight are these individuals. Our second sample of eight are these individuals. These are literally randomly sampled individuals from this population. I have just picked the first random numbers provided by the computer. And then on to the larger samples. This is the first sample of size 30. This is the second sample of size 30 and so on. It's a little difficult to appreciate what's going on by just looking at the balls like that. So let us look at them in a histogram. This is a histogram of the population for the desired metric. And although you can only see the rounded values on these balls, the full numbers are below. And as you can see, the population for this measure is normally distributed, which is why I have plotted the normal distribution as a gray line above the histogram to show you that the shape matches perfectly. 
So here is our population of normally distributed values. And the first sample with size eight that I showed you before are these individuals. And the mean for them is equal to five and their standard deviation is 2.1. I'm not making up these numbers. They're the actual mean and standard deviation of these sampled values. The second sample are these individuals, and these are our statistics, our parameter estimates. The third sample are these individuals. See here, there's a bunch more to the right than to the left, resulting in a rather large mean for this sample. This is our fourth sample, our fifth sample, and so on. We do this 10,000 times. Let's move on to the larger samples. So this is our first sample with size 30. The mean and the standard deviation of the sample. This is our second sample with size 30. Third sample, fourth sample, fifth sample, many, many more. If we do this 10,000 times for samples of size 30, we can then plot the histograms for the means and standard deviations for samples of size 8 and size 30. If we draw lots and lots and lots of samples, and each sample provides a mean and a standard deviation, then we end up with a bunch of means like these or these and a bunch of standard deviations like these and these. So these are just sets of numbers and we can plot their histogram as we could with any other set of numbers. So these are the histograms for the means and standard deviations. This up here is the histogram of the means of the small samples, means of samples with n equals eight. And this here is the histogram for the means of samples with n equals 30. And this is the histogram for the standard deviations of the small samples and the histogram for the standard deviation of the somewhat larger samples. As you can see, there is a substantial range of possible outcomes. It may be easy to imagine, but it's even easier to visualize. These are actual values of means of samples drawn from that population. And if you're only drawing samples of size eight, then you might have gotten a mean of 2.5, which is very far from the population parameter of 4.5. Of course, you always are more likely to get a value that is near the true value of the population parameter than farther out. But if you're drawing larger samples, then the probability that you'll get a value that's far from the parameter is extremely small. The same holds for standard deviations, although these distributions are a bit less symmetric and slightly wider, but still the point is that you get a distribution. The point is that although you sample once and in every study there is one sample taken and measured, always, always, this sample is just one of many possible samples. This means that you could have gotten any other sample. You don't know if your estimate is really close to the population parameter. You don't know if you were unlucky to draw an unrepresentative sample. 
but statistics helps us calculate or at least estimate the possible range of outcomes and this puts our findings in perspective the sampling distribution is a very important concept in statistics because it determines how confident you can be in your results. In addition to calculating a statistic, you always have access to its sampling distribution because people have studied the sampling distributions of different statistics. So you can know the shape and the breadth of this histogram for the kind of statistic you have computed. This helps you put in perspective your own finding and understand the range of possible outcomes that you could have gotten if you had a different sample. And that's why sampling distributions are so important. 